Why do Christians worship Jesus? Now, I know you don't believe that everything in the Gospels attributed to Jesus, Jesus actually said or did. That's okay. You're asking me as a Christian who believes. Why do I, a Christian, worship Jesus? Well, because the Gospels that I believe to be historically accurate have Jesus also saying, John 5, 22, 23, my brother William's going to help me. He's going to read verses for me. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Now, I want to ask you a question. Can a prophet who's a creature, who fears Allah, say, honor me the way you honor Allah? No, he okay. can't. That's sure. Okay, but so Jesus just said the Father, his Father wants everyone to honor the Son just as they honor the Father. And if you don't honor the Son that way, you dishonor the Father. And if I were to ask you a related question, how do you honor Allah? Would you tell me, well, I honor Allah because I pray to Allah, right? That's right. And you bow down all, only to Allah, right? That's right. And you love Allah more than anything and anyone, even more than your nafs, your soul. Yeah. Okay. And you're willing to die for Allah. Obviously, that's how you honor. And that's not an honor yes. you can give to any creature, right? You can't give that honor to anyone. Yeah, that's okay. right. So Jesus said, the way you honor the Father is the same exact way you must honor me. And speaking of prayer, here's what Jesus says in John 14. Verses 13 and 14. And whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So Jesus just told the disciples when he returns to the Father, you can ask in his name and he will do it from heaven. He will do it. But it's not just him because we're Trinitarian. The Father with the Son and the Holy Spirit will answer prayer. Can a God-fearing prophet who fears Allah say that once I go to heaven, you ask in my name and I will do it for you? No, prophets don't answer prayers. But Jesus said he does. You just read it. Now you're going to say, well, the Bible's corrupt. That's okay. I, but my point is, you see why yeah. that same gospel of John that you quoted to me, same gospel of John, yeah. if I don't just take verse 3, but I read it in context, Jesus has already told me before we get to John 17, that the Father wants everyone to give Jesus the same honor that the Father receives because he's his beloved Son. And as the Son, once he's in heaven, he will answer prayers. Those who ask in his name, he will do it from heaven. So that's why. But one more, and then we go back to John 17. In John 9, 35 to 38, he heals a blind man, which the Quran agrees Jesus could do. The Quran agrees that Jesus can heal blind people. But after he heals the blind man, and the blind man is standing before Jesus, what does Jesus say? Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. So here you go. A blind man healed worships Jesus, and Jesus doesn't rebuke him. Jesus says, When I return to the Father, you ask in my name, and I from heaven will answer your prayers on earth. And then Jesus says in this gospel, you must give me the son, the same honor you give the father. So now you wonder why Christians worship the son? You understand why we worship him now? Yeah. How is it that you even believe that it's one plus one plus one becomes again one? you that stupid, huh? What about one times one times one? What's one times one times one? So you, again, you're showing me you're stupid. You don't know math. Christians one, say something, right? Wait, wait. What's one times one times one? That's one. That's one. But that's not what Christians one, wait, believe. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have fun at your expense. One divided by one divided by one. One. What is one to the third power? One. Okay. Now, is God greater than math and greater than creation or is God limited like creation? No, oh, he's greater. So why do you say that God, if he's three, cannot be one? When you have things in creation that are more than one and still a unity. One cube. Have you ever played a cube? You Have you seen a yeah. cube? Yeah. How many squares does a cube have? 32, if I'm not wrong. No. A cube, when you see a cube, like Rubik's cube, like a sugar cube, it has six sides or six squares. How can a cube have six squares and be one cube? Impossible. See, that's what you're telling me. You're telling me the Almighty God cannot be still one God, yet more than one person. And yet in creation, we see things that are plurality and unity, and we have no problem with it. Did you really think about what you did, or you end up embarrassing yourself? Because you're asking me some stupid questions. You know that, right? You, do you have a car? Yeah. Okay. How many doors does your car have? Four. How many tires? Four. Does it have an engine? Yeah. And it has a trunk? 
Yeah. So a car that's finite, limited, one car is made up of multiple parts and it's still one, but God Almighty can't be one and yet more than one person? Man, hey, you are a you, you that comes out is not right, right? Because the, whatever you said is the attributes of the car. We, we we don't say that the doors are car and the spare parts are car, right? I but guess you're not listening. If a car can have multiple aspects to it be one car, why is your God so limited? He cannot be a multiplicity and still be one. You didn't answer the question. So let's try it again. And what do you believe about the Quran? What is the Quran? Uh, it's holy. It's the divine revelation. That piece of trash is holy that tells you you can sleep with young girls and molest captives who are married and you call it holy. It says you can beat your wife. You call that filthy. Know. Do you believe it's a speech of Allah? Uh, yes. Do you believe as the speech of Allah, Kalam Allah in Arabic, it's one of his attributes? Yes. Wow, you just embarrass yourself and you, you should prove to me why you should never ever show yourself publicly as a Muslim until you repent and follow Jesus. And do they say, the Sunni Muslims say, because it's Kalam Allah, one of his sifat attribute, it's uncreated? Right. Right? Okay, good. Now, is the Quran Allah? No. Say it again. The Quran is not no. Allah, right? It can't be, no. Okay, good. And the Quran is uncreated, right? Yes, it's uncreated. It was given by Allah. Do you see? This is why you embarrass yourself. You just did one plus one. Allah is uncreated. The Quran is uncreated. The Quran is not Allah. You have now two uncreated things. You see how you embarrassed yourself again? Now, did the Quran become a book? It you was made it. No, no, it was made into a book. I mean to say okay, it was... Okay, good. It was made into a book. And yet Jesus is the word that was made flesh and you still reject Jesus. Shame on you.